What is going on guys? I am Consumer Tech Review and today we're going to be doing a review of the Red Dragon K30 Draconic, Red Dragon's first 60% wireless keyboard. I'm going to flash back to over a week ago when I got this, do the unboxing, and then we're going to flash back to the present day and I'm going to give you my review of this keyboard after that time. And if at any point in the video you guys want to check out this exact same keyboard, I'll have Amazon links below for the US, UK, and Canada. And if you want to get this thing at the Red Dragon store itself, you can use my code CTR5% to get 5% off your order at Red Dragon and help support the channel. But let's jump into that unboxing. All right, guys, unboxing the K530. This is the 60% mechanical wireless keyboard from Red Dragon, their first 60% keyboard with brown switches. Super excited to unbox this thing. On the front, you just have an image of it with the RGB, and it says that it has the dustproof brown switches, which are the tactile but not clicky ones. On the side, there's just the Draconic on the side. This is the Draconic K30. On the side, the same thing, and on the back, that had my shipping label on it, but there's a little image of it back here, and it says a little of the specifications. But let's pop this baby open. Just gotta cut that in. And ladies and gentlemen, the K30. Okay, it was a little anticlimactic. I thought that it was gonna be a just the keyboard there, but this is kind of cool. I like this. A box in a box it makes a better package for shipping. Okay, wow, this already looks really good. And I did get this in the white color um, because I am doing an all white setup soon. So, wow, really small keyboard, but that is a 60%, right? Because it won't have the number pad and. Wow, does that look good. This looks really good. We're gonna put this off to the side really quick. So this is the charging cable. And I think you can also use this wired if you want to. There's a rubber band around it. Oh, that's a twisty. Nice white cable. It is USB-C, which is awesome because you don't just have to use their L-shaped one, which this probably will be the one that you're gonna to wanna to use. But if you do wanna do one that just goes straight out from it, just use any USB-C cable. I love that. I can even just pull this out of the keyboard and start charging my phone. I love USB-C. Mechanical gaming switches. Do they give you, yes, look at that. They give you, that's the blue one. I have one with the, and these are all Outemu. This is a brown Outemu switch one. So you can actually switch these out to whatever you want. They have to be Outemu though. That's really cool that they just give you that. Super premium. Then they give you a switch puller, really cool. And in here, a super nice, keycap remover and then obviously you get your manual just like with every other red dragon thing you get your manual and this is actually kind of a little shiny one i like it overall the unboxing experience is really awesome with this way better than their other products actually and it might just be because this is one of their newest products but this is all just in a black box with the kind of shiny red dragon logo on the top and then you have it inside the other box let's get to the keyboard okay now this is a good looking keyboard. So obviously they have all the stuff on top of it and then more things in between. So you can see like the FNs and stuff like that and page up and page down. It's all this way. So actually when you're looking at it, it makes a lot of sense. With this, you can also see F1, F2, F3, all of that. It's actually planted on this side, which I really like. It's really cool. And the white looks fantastic. I can't wait to plug it into the RGB, which I will show you in the unboxing. Let's do a typing sound test. This sounds really nice. I love the brown switches. They're quieter than a blue switch, but they're still quite loud. Although I wouldn't say like crazy loud. They're not like the crazy loud blue ones, but um, they're definitely louder than a linear switch, which I actually like that better. I like a tactile feel. And if you don't want something as loud as a blue switch, this is gonna be perfect for that. I actually really like the font of this. I like it much more than what was on the K552, which is a little bit too gamery. This is a little bit subtler, laid back a bit. I really enjoy that. Okay, now coming to the front, you have the Red Dragon red logo, which I really like. I think the white on red looks awesome. Um, on this side, you have the on and off switch, Bluetooth 1, 2, and 3 the lights for the battery and the Bluetooth, and then that's where you plug in to charge it. On this side, there is nothing. 
and then on this side there is nothing and, and this thing does have some heft to it it's not like one of those cheap light keyboards this is actually has some heft to it then on the bottom you have some rubber right here they are just pure smooth rubber uh however these are not these have some texture to them so it's going to be a little bit more grippy for this one um switching those up feel very solid and then on the top that's smooth rubber too i don't know how i feel about the smooth rubber usually i like to have some lines in it it's funny that they did that with lines but then this one is smooth Let's see if it's going to move on the table. It moves if you push it really hard, opposed to the one all the way down. See, the one where you have it all the way down, it doesn't move at all. When you do have this one, it will move with force. Now, to be fair, if you are gaming, this thing is not going to move. Even, I mean, you can see how hard I'm pushing on this. It's not going to move. However, I do appreciate it when they do something like this, uh, some lines or something in it. Um, I appreciate that. But right now what we're going to do is since we're in the unboxing, I'm actually going to compare it to two other keyboards, the Red Dragon K552 and the HyperX Alloy FPS. And the Alloy FPS has silver speed switches. They are kale switches, but they're linear and not tactile. And then the K552 has blue switches, which are very clicky. So we're going to do that comparison for the sound um, and the feeling. And then I'm going to fast forward two weeks and actually do my review of this. Okay, so they're lined up like this just because that one has a cord on it. Both of these are wired. This one is wireless, uh, but this one has a detachable cord. This is the HyperX Alloy FPS. This is the Red Dragon K552 with HyperX keycaps on it. Um, so that is modded slightly, but it's not going to affect the sound very much. This one has linear silver speed switches, Kale. This one has Outemu blue switches. This one has Outemu brown switches. Again, this one's tactile, but not clicky. This one is linear and this one is tactile and very clicky. So let's do a sound test and a feeling test. I'm just going to have to describe my feeling of it. So this one... This one feels really refined. I really enjoy it. Um, this one is also really refined. However, this is not as loud and I'll demonstrate that for you. You can also, when you press it in, this one, it's the same all the way down. This one, you're going to feel a little bump right there. Little bump. That's the tactileness. And typically I prefer this, especially when typing, I find it easier to type on. However, this one is definitely faster to actuate, but that's just because these are really, really nice switches. This one is much more expensive, but let's compare the blue switches now. So you can see a huge difference. So let's see. So they don't feel too incredibly different. This one actually feels a little bit lighter as far as the tactileness, but I appreciate that. I actually like this tactile feel. This definitely feels more solid. It's hard it's hard for me to explain it, but this feels this feels as solid as this one right here. And this one is $110 and this one is like 60 something. Uh, this one is quite a bit less. I think it's like in the 40, 35, $40 range. Um, however, I love this keyboard. Don't get me wrong. These are just I mean, this one actually surprises the heck out of me because it's so premium feeling. Um, and I love the form factor, it's tiny. This is also a perfect example of different keyboard sizes. These are the three main, the TKL full size and 60%. This TKL 10 key less, it obviously just doesn't have this number pad here. The full one has all of this. This one obviously has the multimedia and all of that. And then it has the number pad and the 60% squeezes everything and is just taking this side of it which does shrink everything down a bit and you can see on these two there's a line between here right there it's kind of just a little opening uh, and on this one it just takes that off you know there's nothing there uh, so these are actually um, everything's kind of packed into this little small frame which is super nice to have on your desk and with this being wireless and tiny it's really going to clean your desk up so i'm super excited to switch this to my main driver but let's fast forward to two weeks from now when i actually do my full review of this keyboard right here we are back and we're going to go over the pros and the cons and then I'm going to give you my own real life experience that I've had with this keyboard. Now jumping right into the first pro, that's got to be the 60%. That's why you're getting this keyboard, the form factor of it. You can see there's no number pad on that or anything. And the first pro of that is that it's super compact and doesn't take up very much space on your desk. Now the overall build quality of this thing is fantastic. It feels solid, it feels sturdy. And one little thing with this is the keycaps on the top are kind of this uh, texturized surface but on the edges it's actually a gloss so the RGB glows even brighter because it bounces off that glossiness 
at night and it looks really good. So the next thing is the battery life. This thing has a 3000 milliamp battery inside of it and it lasts for a really, really long time. Now, it also has some battery saving things set up for it. One of those things is if you leave your keyboard and don't touch it for about five minutes, the RGBs will turn off. And when you want to use your keyboard again, you might think, oh, you might have to wake it up like you wake up your computer. However, that's not true. The second you touch it, the first click will go through to your computer. So there's no wake times. So basically it's a really unobtrusive way to save battery life. And Red Dragon just did a really good job with that. Now the next pro is a huge one and Red Dragon does a really good job with this. It's funny because you would think Red Dragon is a little bit more of a budget brand. They actually do a lot of things that some of these more high-end brands don't do. And that thing is the RGB. So first of all, the RGB looks awesome, especially in this white. Um, I decided to get the white because I'm switching my entire setup to a white setup. So sub if you want to see all of those videos with a white setup. But the RGB can be completely controlled with no software. So you can program individual key lighting, you can program all of the different modes and custom effects, which is actually a lot. Um, and you can do that without ever getting a software, which I love. And I really think every keyboard that has RGB should do that because I can't stand having to download software. Sometimes they're outdated. Sometimes they don't work with the newest windows. I just want it to be on the keyboard and they do this. At the end of the video, I am gonna walk you through how to do it. I'm not doing it in the middle of the video because it is kind of a longer process just to make sure that you guys understand it. It's not very complicated. However, it's gonna be at the end of the video. Now, this thing is a wireless keyboard, but if you do wanna just wire it up and not have to worry about your battery life, although I don't really worry about my battery life even though it is wireless, but if you do want to wire it, all you have to do is just turn off the actual device on the side of it and plug it in through a USB-C cable and you're good to go. First of all, I love that they did USB-C. Everything should be USB-C. And for this price point, it's really awesome that they have USB-C because I have a $110 HyperX keyboard over there and they didn't use USB-C. So really awesome seeing USB-C in this. Now on the same side where you put the cable in, there's also an on and off switch and a Bluetooth changer, which is another pro, which we'll get to. But the cable that you plug it in with, that it comes with, it obviously matches it. So if you get the black one, it's gonna be black. If you get the white one, it's white like mine, but it's an L shape, which I love because that just cleans up your entire setup a little bit more if you're gonna make it wired. But again, to have the cleanest setup, no wires. That's gonna move me into the next pro, which is amazing. It is the Bluetooth. Every single device, no matter if they all said they have Bluetooth, blah, blah, blah. It's always specific to the device on how that Bluetooth is legitimately gonna work. This Bluetooth connects so quickly. I never have connectivity issues. And one time I was messing around with all of the uh, keyboard layout stuff without looking at the manual. Um, so I didn't really know what was going on, but I was trying to figure it out myself. And I clicked the Bluetooth button and it disconnected it, right? Cause I was messing with the pairing mode. Um, and all I had to do was turn it off, turn it back on, click the Bluetooth and it came up instantly connected instantly. And I tried that a couple times before just to make sure it wasn't like the first time that I did that. This thing will pair with your PC so instantly and it's literally ready to go. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to unpair my keyboard from my PC and then pair it again. And you can see how instantly it works. This is really nice because I've had Bluetooth connectivity issues with high end Logitech devices before. So it was really nice to see they like the Bluetooth was perfect on it. Absolutely perfect. It couldn't have been better. Now, as far as the switches, these are Altemu Brown switches, which means they're going to be tactile, but not clicky. Now, just because they're not clicked doesn't mean they're not loud. These are still fairly loud. However, they're not even close to how loud a blue switch would be. I really like these. Um, I do prefer blue switches because I just like that. I know a lot of people will get sick of them over time though. So this is a perfect uh, medium for that because they're not gonna be as loud, but they're still gonna have that tactile that it's not just gonna be a linear press in and press out. Now this keyboard is hot swappable with any of the Altemu switches. So you could put blues in there, you could put reds, blacks, any of the Altemu switches, you can hot swap them into this thing. However, technically Gateron switches can't be hot swapped onto this. However, uh, I have heard of people actually putting them on there and it's, it literally goes both ways. Some people say you can't do it. You could do it. But some people have actually seen, they said they did fit them in here. So if you do want to go to Gaterons, maybe that's possibly another video. Tell me if you guys want me to get some Gateron switches and see if this keyboard 
will take them. But overall, I really like the switches. They're pretty dang nice, and I do like the browns for specific instances. Uh, but if you guys like blues, if you like that clickiness, but it's a little bit too loud for you, the tactileness, the browns are going to be really great for you. Now that's going to move us to the next pro, which is something to do with Bluetooth again. This thing connects to three devices. You're, there's a switch on the side where you can connect one, two, and then three devices. They can all be connected at the same time and you just switch between them, which is crazy. I mean, that's usually on stuff that is way more expensive. So to have that on a keyboard like this at this price point, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, link below, go pick it up right now. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But the next pro is we got side printed letters. Uh, because it's a 60% keyboard, they have some function keys built onto the uh, sides of the actual keycaps, which is pretty cool. And they're pretty self-explanatory after you understand the concept, which we're going to go through because that has something to do with the RGB um, programming in this keyboard. But the last pro, which a lot of people actually review this product badly because of this pro, I'm pretty sure it has macro keys in it. Uh, which is pretty awesome so you can pretty much program whatever you want onto those six macro keys uh, which is really cool however because of the way that the keyword set up it's kind of doubled so if you press fn f7 which is also the seven key um it's going to start the recording for your macros and i did that in the beginning because i was messing around seeing you know what would change the rgbs and my six kind of stopped working and went typing a bunch of letters because that's what I typed in after it. So a lot of people, I've actually seen a couple of comments where people are like, it doesn't even work, this blah, blah, blah stopped working. It's not that, it's literally that they accidentally programmed their macro keys. So those could be totally reset. It's not a big deal. Okay, so if you've had any other Red Dragon product, uh, you know that most of them, you can actually change all the RGB through the actual keyboard. Now, the way to do this and follow along closely, it's not super hard. What you're going to do to actually do individual key lighting, not change the modes, but do individual key lighting, is you're going to press the FN2, which is the next to the control button and the FN, the normal FN, it's going to be the letters on the side. So there's FN1 and FN2. You're going to press FN2, and then you're going to press delete twice until the caps lock starts flashing. At that point, you press each individual key that you wanna change the color of, and it cycles through what color you want. Once you get it on the color that you want, just leave it there and then change all the other keys. This isn't as fast as the K552 that I did a review on. However, it still works really well once you learn how to do it, which again, you can see is not very complicated. Once you get everything you know, figured out for your individual key lighting, you just press FN2 and then the delete button again, and it saves it all. Um, and if you want to change all of the RGBs, that's where we're going to move into the functions to do those. So they all function through the F12, F11, F10, and F9. So through those, you're going to basically control all of the RGB functions that are not individual key lighting. So pressing FN2 is what is going to change all of the RGBs. So Pretty much FN2 is going to change all of those modes, right? So press FN2 and then press F9 and that will cycle through all the modes, all the crazy um, RGB, like rainbow effects, all of the uh, cool stuff. There's actually one cool, really cool um, mode on here that when you type, it's like a pinkish color and when you type, the faster you type, the darker red it gets. It's really cool. I like it. So there's a ton of awesome RGB modes on there. Then on the FN10 one, or F10, I don't know why I said FN10, but you go FN2, FN10, that will turn on and off the actual RGB. And then F11 and F12 will turn up and down the brightness. And remember, you have to hold FN2 and then click those. But that's all the RGB controls. You never have to download a software, which I absolutely love because I don't like doing that. But you do have a software if you want it, but you can do it all through this, which I definitely recommend that you learn because it's so much quicker and so much easier, actually, once you learn it. Um, it's super quick to learn. If it sounded complex, it really isn't. Now we are going to move into the cons, and there's only one of them because for what this is, it's really an amazing product. That only con is the caps lock uh, only lights up red and it only lights up red when it's on. So normally you'd have like a separate little tiny LED that like shows you when it's on or off. It's just never on as far as an RGB over the actual letters until you press it and then it turns red. 
Um, a lot of people didn't like that. It honestly didn't bother me that much, but it bothered some people a lot. So I had to mention it as a con. But guys, if you are looking for a 6% wireless keyboard at a budget that is really affordable for everything this thing gives you, this is definitely the one for you. There's links below that you can pick one up for yourself and I highly recommend it if this is the type of keyboard you're looking for. But if you enjoyed my review and it helped you out, help me out and throw a like below. But if you wanna go check out some of my other products, I do a bunch of gaming tech reviews and you should definitely subscribe because we are trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by December Christmas. I don't even know when it is in December. This was Consumer Tech Review and I'll see you guys later.